This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans. Hello from the other side. Hello and welcome to a, well, I was going to say another edition of Hello from the other side, but it's a new edition. That's it. It's a new season. It's a new league. It's a new manager. So not just us, but Saints as well. Um, I'm joined by Steve from the uh, Total Saints podcast. Uh, he's going to come and talk about all things Southampton, what his thoughts on Sheffield Wednesday, and um, give. Well, he's going to try and do his best and give us a prediction for the league as well. So just before I start, Steve, um, anyone listening, can you just give us a like, subscribe on YouTube, on Twitter, every anywhere you listen to the podcast, please. Much appreciated and. Uh, We'll get straight into it. So, Steve, welcome to the Wednesday week. Uh, how are you doing? Yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, just kind of building up, building up now to this to this um, opening opening weekend. It's it's odd that we've been kind of um, hand picked. It seems for this game, the newly promoted team against newly relegated team, kind of perfect for the team for the TV cameras. Sky will no doubt go to town and. Uh, undoubtedly, it'll be Andy Hinchcliffe on CoComs um, with a really unbiased um, <laughs> uh, attitude in the in on CoComs. It'll be um, it'll be infuriating for us watching. But um, yeah, I'm look, looking forward to it in a in a bizarre sense. Yeah, I mean, like you said, that the the team that you would you would think that uh, the team that's come up just from League One. Fantastic. I mean, any Wednesday I will just keep going on about the 120 plus three, the playoffs. We could talk about it all day. And then obviously a team that's just been relegated from the Premier League. Um, I, I'm sure they just put the balls in a bag when they or the supercomputer when they come up with fixtures and went, oh, look what's just come up. I, I'm sure it was a, an accident, not. Yeah, what a, what a surprise. <laughs> what a surprise. Yeah, I mean, uh, um, it would be in any circumstances, it, it's a great matchup. Um, we've we're obviously we <laughs> I was gonna say we're on the up, we're buoyed with um optimism, and we've been but uh, what can I say? Our chairman has probably just kicked us straight in the teeth in the last six seven weeks of um how he's acted in, in behind the scenes. Um, it's it's been interesting, so it's gonna be like I said, Premier League team, which you are, Steve, at the minute. <laughs> um, <laughs> If reports are believed, you've got a, a few assets that may believe him. But Friday night, it looks like we'll be seeing a virtually full strength Premier League team plus some additions that you've made as well, no doubt. Well, I mean, it's, it was a Premier League team that only picked up twenty five points, so I wouldn't be quite <laughs> quite so concerned. We, we um, were a League One team but, that picked up ninety six and still yeah. needed the playoffs. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. It, it's a funny one, isn't it? I mean, I, yeah. I still, I still kind of maintained all the way through last season, and and even now that the squad we had last season was was good enough to stay up if they if they had the right manager. Um, unfortunately, we appointed the the sort of walking argument that is Nathan Jones, um, and basically gave us gave ourselves basically no chance. Um, so yeah, I mean, in terms of in terms of the squad makeup, we've we've not really we've not um, sold anybody we particularly wanted to keep um, as yet at the time of recording. Um, I would imagine that will change between now and the end and the end of August when the transfer window um, closes. But I mean, it's been it's been pretty irritating just watching a scrolling nonsense on Twitter where every single journalist is being briefed by both by a combination of Liverpool, Newcastle and West Ham about how they're really close to signing, um, signing these Southampton players. And then suddenly it goes quiet and it turns out that actually they were nowhere near because they, they came in and offered, um, offered a few magic beans uh, yeah, rather, than, rather than the actual money that we were asking for. Peanuts, um, com peanuts yeah. compared to what, what it should be. Um, yeah. I mean, I mean, I hope, and obviously we're recording this on Tuesday evening, uh, by Friday morning, nine o'clock, there's a couple of announcements saying that obviously um, Southampton sold two of their main assets. Is, is it uh, La Romeo Lavia and yep. obviously James Ward-Prowse, um, West Ham and Liverpool, is it? Um, 
Seems, seems to be. Yeah, I mean, I think I think Chelsea are possibly sticking their oar in with with Lavia as well, um, which I think you'd probably probably expect. Um, <laughs> Chelsea just just deciding to stick themselves in on on any deal they could be bothered with um, over the last year or so. Their transfer policy has been um, pretty hilarious to to see it unfold. Um, but yeah, I mean, L- Lavia and Warprouse are the two kind of most prized assets. Tino Livramento as well at fullback. Newcastle have been. Uh, briefing their client journalists um, yeah. very, very heavily as to um, what's been going on in the negotiations from from their side of the argument. Um, I mean, obviously, it turns out that what they've been saying has been miles from the truth. Um, but yeah, I think there's there's an acceptance there that the team that, as I say, the team that lines up on Friday night is probably going to be um, somewhat different um in three to four weeks time um because quite frankly i mean it's it's not even a case that we that there are um that we that we know that we're going to kind of get picked off because we've by all accounts we're reasonably strong financially and we're we're able to hold hold out for um for big money for these players um but also that i think realistically actually we we want to reduce the squad number um, sort of down to something a little bit more manageable. I think we had something like 34 senior pros last season, which is just mental. Yeah. Um, and you want to be able to reduce that down. And then that will then allow Russell Martin to bring in a few more players that he wants, that he feels will will suit the system. Because I think what we've seen over pre-season is that there's quite a few players who are probably in our strongest 11 or on the fringes of it, but that are really not comfortable with the system that, that Russell Martin wants us to play. And so if they end up on the pitch, then, I mean, all hell could break loose. Um, yeah. And that's, that's one, that's one of the sort of wait and see aspects, I think of, of how, how this summer has unfolded and how the early sort of exchanges of the season will go for us. On, on the, uh, on the pre-season side, um, obviously, I was going to compare Southampton and Sheffield Wednesday, then, but only on the managerial side. Obviously, we've we've lost Darren Moore. We've got a new manager come in. You've you've got Russell Martin who's coming as well. Who's who's going to adapt to those play, those players need to adapt like like you've just said, Steve, to his style of play. And I believe you've only won one out of your preseason games. Um, we're the same. We've only won one. Mm. It's you can't take anything from preseason. I know people scream at this results and this. It's all about yeah. minutes in the legs. It's it's getting styles of play. It doesn't matter. But it does. Does he have a style of play that Southampton are going to adopt, adapt, adopt to? Sorry, and the players that he has got as his disposal at the minute are they took to that? What you can see. Um, I mean, it's see. From from what I've seen of the games, the games that I've been at, and the other ones that have been streamed and things like that, um, yeah, he's got a very distinct style. He wants to play out from the back, um, and I think, I mean, we, certainly if if you've seen any of his pre, any of his other sides at Milton Keynes and at Swansea, yeah. um, they've kind of had varying degrees of success with it. Um, but ultimately, I, ultimately. I, the reality is that he's coming in with a much better squad of players than than he's had to manage before. So, from a technical perspective, those players should be more capable than um, the previous squads he's had um, in terms of adapting. It looks like most of them seem kind seem seem on board. Um, the performances in preseason have actually been fine. The, re- the results, as you say, are kind of largely irrelevant. You never you're never playing against teams of an equal standing. Um, so we've played, um, just off the top of my head, we played Benfica, um, RZ Alkmaar and, uh, Bournemouth. I mean, Bourm- the, the selection of Bournemouth as a home friendly was one of the most tone deaf things I've ever, I've ever <laughs> seen Southampton Football Club do. Uh, cause it basically just gave Bournemouth, uh, the 3000 Bournemouth fans who turned up, um, an evening of 90 minutes of basically just taking the piss out of us. Um, <laughs> because they've never been above us in in a league table before, right? Um, this is the first season ever that Bournemouth have been in the higher division. Um, like we've always kind of kept, they've always been that sort of that little that annoying little brother down the road that you kind of ruffle his hair a little bit every so often, and and we'd go down there and play um sort of fundraising friendlies to 
to keep them out of administration and 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 things like that and and we were always we were always happy to do it and now all of a sudden the the boot's very much on the other foot and it's um not gone down particularly well um but in terms of in terms of the results sorry Sorry, Sorry. we've 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 had that with chef united and Mm. we're, we're the same it's it's grinding that they are where they are now. Premier League obviously took took one of your positions there in the Premier mm. League, um, and it's always been so. They're the, the not the little brother because they're equal sizes really, but we've always been the thought of the bigger team. Uh, it's, mm. But fair play to them. I'm, I'm not one of those that bashes them that much. So fair play to them. But sorry, go go on. I'd, I'd I'd probably kind of assimilate it more to if Barnsley were ahead of you for. Um, for that sort of period of time, mm-hmm. um, because that's kind of the relationship, and I don't think you and Barnsley are particularly. It's not the same ferocity. I mean, it's, I mean, it's probably yeah, a little bit. It's probably more ferocious from their side. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And and that's that's kind of what we get from Bournemouth. Bournemouth Bournemouth fans hate us, and we kind of look at them as like, oh, it's you. Um, now, <laughs> so, now, now, can someone talk about a proper proper rivalry with Portsmouth, please? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's preseason has been kind of fine, as you say. Results results have been poor, but but largely irrelevant. Um, we've we've played we've played fine. You can see what the manager is trying to do, and you can see that the progression game by game um, has kind of got the players on board, and the players seem to be quite well drilled in certain situations on on how to handle them. Um, I mean, I think once we get our first home game uh, next week against Norwich, I think half of St Mary's will probably have a heart attack at our uh, our desire to pass uh, pass the ball in pretty triangles in our in our own six yard box. Um, but that's the way that that Martin wants to play, and yeah, I mean, it's I, th- I think that I think most of the players are, are reasonably comfortable. Um, it's a, it's I think the the test is how it works in a competitive environment. Um, because obviously while players are obviously trying in preseason, there's still that sort of sense of, well, it's a, it's only a it's only a training game. We're going through the motions a little bit. Um, so how it how it works in the sort of blood and thunder of the championship, um, when we got thirty five thousand um Yorkshiremen um shouting at us. Um let's let's see how that goes Friday night. I it's I I'm expecting us to concede some really bad goals. From sort of real sort of dopey, stupid things like that, um, but then we were doing that last season when we weren't even trying to keep possession. So it's a, it's a, a form of progression, I guess. Um, and I think I think the club has has taken the reasonable reasonable approach that actually when you're in the championship and you're coming down and you're you're therefore quite a big fish in that pond, um, you're gonna you're gonna see a lot of the ball. So you're going to be expected to know what to do with it in possession. And quite frankly, we've not known how what to do in possession for the last two or three years, really, um, as a Premier League side who's kind of wanted to sit deep and counter on teams. Yeah. Um, so actually knowing what to do when we're in possession and looking to try and make make the running a little bit more. Um, I think I think that's the that's the big test, uh, whether the same group of players are able to, to kind of just switch um, over the course of a summer. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Yeah, I, I mean, it's it's going to be it's going to be interesting for yourselves and us as well. We've we've got a new manager, like I said before, new style of play, new new ethos. He want, he's saying he wants to play out from the back. Preseason's not been the best. Um, played Luton on Saturday, two one loss. Some real good signs, some real good play. Um, some of the players really do look, but. Like you say, it was preseason. Some of them didn't look that interested, but it's a preseason game. Some of them really like wanted to play for the shirt. Like they knew that we got made a couple of signings. We needed signings, really did. We, we're mm-hmm. getting through the door now, so it's it's going to take a few weeks, like any new signing. So even for us as well, I think the team on on Sat on sorry Saturday Friday night for us will by the end of August will be a different as well. On the plus side, we, we won't be losing anyone that we really can. Um, we haven't really got any saleable assets. Uh, Bannon, Windass, maybe, but I don't think I can't see any of them leaving. I think I think and, Bannon Bannon's of an age now where he's settled and and seems is. to be quite seems to be quite happy where he is. I mean, he he basically runs your midfield, doesn't he? And and he wouldn't necessarily get that role um, elsewhere. 
No, you're right. I think I think he's, he's, he's 32, 33 now. He's captain of the club. Um, yes, a new manager's coming who, who might, may want to play a bit different. I think he has said in the media that the way he wants to approach play is not going to be heavily reliant on Bannon in the midfield, which is great. Um, we're going to play it a bit different. Take pressure like, off, don't you? Takes pressure off him. It takes pre- Yeah, of course. But then other players, for the last three, four seasons, we have had Bannon very much central um, it, and other players now need to step up um, which it, it all depends on, on how Munez um, plays, sets up, uh, it's going to be really interesting. You, you said you said earlier about the travelling fans for, for Southampton, I've, I've seen you, you sold 2,500 nearly and I believe today you got some extra um, uh, I think I think we got the extras at the back end back end of last week. Um, right. So I think I think those have all gone as well. So you've I think because I think from what I understand, basically that stand now is a fixed capacity because um, it's yeah, it pretty much pretty much on its last legs. Um, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think I think we're now split over upper and lower tiers. Yeah, I think um, I, I think the top tier is maximum is two thousand seven hundred, I believe now, and I think it's a thousand on the bottom. If mm. that, so uh, just for argument's sake, three and a half thousand. If if you're going to sell all them mm. and you've made the trip up on a Friday night, then actually fair play, um, really. But it's always good to see the away fans. I know because they've got the whole stand. It's not like thing, so it's it's good to see the away fans. From my benefit, my, my perspective, um, it's always better, don't into when you've got fans there. Yeah, I mean, it, it just it it makes the atmosphere. Um, there's so. So many grounds. I mean, obviously, we've we've had this for years in the Premier League, where as as a way fans, you turn up at a, at a big Premier League ground and you're the only ones making any noise. Um, but I think that kind of only really only really happens in the Championship when there's not many away fans, because it doesn't it then gives it doesn't give the home fans something to bounce off, if you like. Um, whereas generally, I think when when sort of normal normal away attendances um, turn up at Championship grounds, there's there's a decent atmosphere. Um, that's that's kind of one thing that I've always kind of preferred over the Premier League. I mean, I, I personally I don't I don't buy the nonsense that the um, the Championship is the league to be in because at the end of the day, why would you want to get promoted otherwise? Um, oh yeah, yeah, you'd be happy you, with tenth every season, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, yeah, it, yeah, it's just. Um, I mean, Ipswich, Ipswich did 15 years consecutive in the Championship, and and they were all, their fans were all complaining about how boring it was. It's like, well, Mick McCarthy came in and um, obviously did a great job in taking them down um, <laughs> to give them some give them something a bit different. But it's yeah, I mean, you you can get you can get a little bit stale by it, but um, I think as long as as long as fans are travelling and our, our away volume has gone up massively over the last probably three or four years, which is surprising given that the quality of football has gone in the opposite direction um and, so and, and the distance that you have to mm. travel for the majority of your away team games it's not like yeah. us we're, we're we're not midlands but we're centralish to a lot of football clubs that are in the yeah. north um but for you obviously on the south coast you, you haven't got that many uh you've got a journey no. to london or something so for, for you say saying that your your way of following has gone up well it's fantastic. What on 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 the thing? Obviously, we saw in the. It was reported that obviously what what Sheffield Wednesday were uh, charging you for the away ticket Friday night has been subsidised. Is that was yes. that correct? Has it been subsidised by your sponsor? Is that right? Yeah. So our one of our um, yeah. So our main kit sponsor is some horrible sort of overseas Asian betting crypto nonsense. Um, <laughs> right. Yeah, it's, it's it's one of those shady ones. Um, that I'm sort of massively against, um, and the and a ban on a ban on those can't come too soon. Um, but yeah, I mean they've they've basically dipped into their pockets and subsidised everybody. Um, so I think you were charging thirty six quid, um, and we've paid thirty. Um, so that's basically down to the same because obviously in the Premier League you've got the away cap, so it, yeah. you, you you don't pay more than thirty quid at any any away game. Um, which is one of the few good initiatives that the Premier League does for fans. Um, oh, it's the bare minimum they can do, given how they <laughs> shaft everybody else. But yeah, um, yeah. but yeah, the 
um, obviously not having a cap means that we're open to this sort of thing. And I guess you've seen the situation at Leeds as well, where they were their away yeah. tickets are going to be the 45 or 47. Sounds like they've rode back a little bit in terms that um, clubs that can do a reciprocal deal with them, they'll price a little bit more sensibly. Um, but I assume Wednesday won't be one of them. <laughs> um, probably probably give, not. I, given, I, I mean, although, although actually the, the prices probably will be reciprocal because they'll be they'll be charging you 47, you'll be charging them about the same. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it will it will be. Um I've got I've got my own thoughts on that, what Leeds have done, and I think it's uh, pretty shitty to be honest. But mm. they, they, they put their away, away ticket prices out for the world to see, got absolute pelters from everybody, and then put it on the onus of the club. And by writing to them all, all the supporters, clubs and everything, to say, look, we're going to do this now. If you don't, then it's your costing your fans the £47, mm. which is absolutely ridiculous. Uh, I mean, yeah, but I've, I've, that, that's enough on leads on this uh, podcast, <laughs> mate, I said, for, for a few weeks anyway, till we play them. Um, so, Sheffield Wednesday, Steve. Um, like we said, we've just promoted. You've come down. Um what what do you make of Sheffield Wednesday? What's your what's your your thoughts on them? How do you how do you think Southampton are going to approach the game? Um, who do you like of Sheffield Wednesday players? Who do you think you may fear? There may not be anybody if you're a Premier League team coming down. But just a bit of an overview on your thoughts on on the club, if you don't mind. Um, I mean, I must admit, sort of since you've since you drifted down into League One, you've kind of gone a little bit kind of out of out of vision for. All right, fair, all right, that's a bit period harsh, of time. Come on, <laughs> it's unfortunately yeah, that, that is, it's, yeah. yeah, it's unfortunately it's, it's the way the way it goes. I must admit, I'd I must I'd kind of tuned out from a lot of the championship, even um, sort of for a number of years, just because I I got through this stage of being a bit bored of of watching wall to wall football. Um, <laughs> but I've, I've kind of kind of got a little bit back, a little bit of the enthusiasm back now. Um, but I think the only I think the only two games I saw of yours last season were the two playoff two playoff games um, against Peterborough, and obviously they were complete chalk and cheese, <laughs> utter utter lunacy. Yeah. Um, but honestly, I mean the play, playoff playoff semi finals are always a little bit mad, and so I don't think you can necessarily base anything really on on those games and and the outcome of those um, performances can be hit and miss. Um, it's kind of who's got the who's got the bottle for the for the big occasion, I think. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, you've got what ninety six points and finished third. Um, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you deserve you deserve to take that third spot. Um, when when you accumulate that many points over over a forty six game season, um, yeah, it's it. And obviously, having lost the first leg four 0 you you guys must have been out sort of completely crestfallen. It's like, are we ever going to get out of this division? Mm. Um and Definitely. then yeah, to turn to turn it around the way you did was was obviously very impressive. Um but also just a complete sort of dropping of the guts from um uh, from Peterborough. Um completely completely shit the bed there, didn't they? It was it, it was just just a mess from from their perspective. It um was the, I th- it, it was the uh, it was the it was the old going to the second leg at home. It was the get an early goal. If we get an early goal, we're in it, and that's it. Yeah. And obviously, the best thing that Peterborough could have done was give us a penalty. Yeah. <laughs> and so, which on the I think it was tenth uh, minute, I think it was, um, mm. and that was it. It was just all yeah. all Sheffield Wednesday. Yeah. They, right. They Crowd, a... Crowds up. Everyone believes yeah. there's there's now a that's chance. Right. And um, yeah, it was it was it was a mad night that one. Um, but I think in, ter- in terms of your overall se- overall season and sort of how you're going to go, how you're going to approach this this term, um, I mean, from it, just sort of casting my eye, it does seem as if you've got a little bit of an old team. Um, yeah. And I think as an outsider, my concern would be that that lack that sort of while you, you're obviously you've obviously got a lot of experienced players. Um, the fitness side of things may cause a problem late. Um, sort of once you get into yeah. the into the um, horrible depths of winter, and everyone's picking up um, picking up hamstring injuries. Um, and but I but I would imagine in an ideal world, I mean, without all the nonsense that you've had going on over the summer, ordinarily a promoted team, regardless of what the makeup of that team is, 
you've got momentum and you you have a sprint start at, at the beginning of the season. Um, but actually, because of because of all the all the stuff that's gone on, as you say, in the last what six or seven weeks, yeah. um, predominantly thanks to the chairman, um, I, it kind of feels as if the momentum actually is kind of more with us in that we've got a manager in that we absolutely wanted to get. Um, we've kind of still got a Premier League squad, as you say, sort of. Um, I mean, mm. in name only. Um, but yeah, your your guys are now. I don't know. Is is it is it the is it that early in the season that if we if we went a goal up early doors that the atmosphere would turn very quickly at Hillsborough? I don't I don't know kind of how fickle the fan base has got over over the years oh, of being down. I, we, I can imagine it we can are be fickle. Bad. We are fickle. We are. Um, yeah, I, I, I. I, I I wouldn't like to obviously. I don't speak for all the fans. I speak for myself and things. And I'm a season ticket holder. I go home and away. Um, I I would say so. Yeah. Even though it's a it's it is a new manager, it's a new coaching setup. We've had all the off field bollocks we've had mm. in the last six seven weeks. Like I said, just chatting before we came came recording. Um, the feel good factor. Everything that we positive we had. Um, at the end of last season, has been kicked out of a lot of the fan base. A lot of the fan base aren't happy. We've we had one signing, and we've made like three three signings now in the last week, I believe it is. Um, so we're getting there. It's mm. just it is. I think this game comes Friday, and I am I am glad it's against yourselves um, for the first game. Obviously, coming down Premier League team, we're not we're not in any sort of groove. We're not, um, like you said, we haven't got that feel good, positive. Let's hit the ground running. Um, so I, I am quite happy that we are playing a obviously a, a team that's been relegated rather than a mid table team that's been in this league a while, like a Preston or yeah. someone who kind of know, knows what the grind's all about. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, so because obviously you're not into a groove, like you say, no. you've been relegated. Well, you, we're, you we're, don't we're a team that's used. Yeah, we're we're a group of players that's used to losing games every week. Yeah, uh, and um, yes, we we didn't go towards the end of the season. We didn't. We had twenty six game unbeaten run, but towards the end, of, apart from the playoff games, uh, we weren't in fantastic form. Um, mm. But a couple of games uh, the, uh, the magnitude we played in would have been great going into this first game. If if we'd have kept the coaching setup, the manager made some really good signings, um, which we think we have anyway. And gone into this first game, it, it, I, I probably feel more confident. But I'm okay with playing Southampton if that mean if that mm. makes sense. Um, well, look, I, I guess getting getting the the teams that kind of I think everybody probably assumes we're going to be at the top end of the table. I think as a promoted side, you you possibly want to get get one or two of those out of the way early um, because if you're gonna um, if you're gonna lose, then okay, lose lose to the good teams. Um, if that's what we turn out to be, we, I mean, we we might turn out to be an absolute shambles. Um, yeah. In which case, losing to us will be will be a bit of a mess. I mean, we did the we did the double over Chelsea last season, and and still only got twenty five points. Um, that's how that's how ridiculous things things can get in those yeah. in those scenarios. But yeah, I I think I, would, I mean I I mean if I if I was in charge of Wednesday, I'd be saying, well, look. These these guys, okay, they've they've got a new manager. Things are a little bit different, but the the mentality in in that in that team is a losing one. And if you if you get on them from get on the front foot from the start, put them under pressure, see how see how they can um, cope with the with the atmosphere. Because at the end of the day, the, I mean, I'm sure the hills were crowd. If you are if you are on the front foot and you're on top of it on top in a game, especially first game of the season, doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter whether you've come down or or gone up yeah. or been stuck in mid table first game of the season if most people are kind of vaguely up for it yeah and if you can if you can harness that crowd then all of a sudden it becomes a very uncomfortable night for us um whereas if you kind of approach it meekly and sort of a bit sort of timid um then all of a sudden we gain we gain in confidence we can knock it around a little bit as we like um if we can get a goal then all of a sudden crowd's quiet and everything oh, yeah. becomes a lot more comfortable. Yeah. Um, but it's, I mean, those first those first 10, 20 minutes, 
um, are going to be are going to be a very good good indicator as to how that game goes. I think. Yeah, I, I, I to- totally agree with that. What what you've said there, Steve. I mean, we w- the crowd is a, is a is a massive thing at, at Hillsborough. Um, it we've s- shown before that when it's when it's behind the players with the players, the old the <laughs> <laughs> the age old 12th man uh, mm. comes out um, but then I would hope that the, the fans know that we are playing Southampton they are roughly the same sort of team that's come down yes different style of play different manager but they are regardless how many points you got a Premier League team so mm. coming to, so I, I hope that and we, we've moved up I would hope that fans do do take a bit of time and if if it does doesn't go Sorry, our way. Then they they aren't on the on the team's back because there's there's nothing worse. They've got to be got to be right about it. They've got to know expectations are uh, a killer at Hillsborough. We 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 seem to be a big club, um, but we haven't been in thirty years. So it's yeah. What it's, was it? Uh, was it two thousand? You went down two thousand. Yeah, so 20, twenty odd. Yeah, twenty twenty three. I think we're now. I think. We're the longest out of the Premier League, is it? Because obviously Forest were, and uh, they've been in the Premier League, so so one of the clubs. Um, it's yeah, it is what it is. We, we mm. we've got promoted to league from League One. Next stop Premier League for us, obviously. Um, I'm going to work. I mean, we've waffled on now for half an hour, Steve. It's it's great to have you. So let's um, let's get a, a match prediction for you for for Friday night from you. Sorry. I mean, I'm going to go with go with the score that's very unusual for us um, for two reasons. One, um, we'll actually score a goal. Um, and two, we'll, a- we'll actually keep a clean sheet. I think I think we'll, we'll scrape a 1-0. Um, I kind of think it'll be a, it might even be a first half goal that we, we kind of, we get, get in front, get our noses in front and then kind of play it professionally and, and just, just see it out, hopefully with the minimal of fuss, but I suspect with some occasional bits of kamikaze in there as well. Um, yeah, I, I think I think we'll be, we need a bit of a warm up in terms of scoring goals. Uh, that's been our problem basically since we sold Danny Ings, really. Um, and we've not, not really replaced um, those goals, but been down the championship all of a sudden Adam Armstrong and Shea Adams are proven goal scorers at this level so hopefully yeah. if we can create the chances for them then as the season progresses we get a little bit more um a little bit more clinical in front of goal but that's I think in yeah that that side of things is probably my biggest concern yeah I'm I'd I'd, I'd take a what if we have to we'd take a one nil um loss but i I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go myself. I'm going for a draw. I'm gonna think it's gonna be a pretty pretty tough. Um, I, I'm gonna go for a one all. I think I think we. It all depends on how we set up and how we adapt to obviously your style. Um, we've we played Luton at the weekend. Like they're a Premier League team now. But obviously they were Championship. Um, obviously the other way around playing Southampton. Uh, I'm gonna go for a one all. Um, I just think you're gonna have too much. For us, when um, it, it, all over the pitch, to be honest, uh, I can't see anything that where we we are. We've signed a couple, like I say, a couple of players with pace. We're always lacking pace. You said earlier about the age of our squad; it was an old squad. We have added a few youngsters now um, and released a couple of guys as well. So it's it, it's going to be interesting. Um, uh, over the last few weeks, everyone's been doing the predictions, all podcasts, all uh, media outlets doing the predictions for every league. Um, and more often than not, I would say ninety percent of them have got Sheffield Wednesday to be relegated. Yeah, I know, I know. It's it. I think it's purely how what what you pointed out the the turmoil turmoil off the pitch and the lack of signings, which we are addressing now. Yeah. Um, new manager. Um, so I'll just ask ask you, Steve, um, on overall gut feeling, do you think Sheffield Wednesday will escape relegation? Or so, so sorry. Shall we, shall we survive in the championship? Um, I mean, you've got as good a chance as any. I think the there there are always one or two basket club basket case clubs as well. And basically, as long as you can avoid being those, then there's yeah. probably only one or two places that you've got then left to take. Um, Cardiff, I think, are in all kinds of bother. 
Yeah. Um, so they're going to they're gonna be there or thereabouts. Uh, Rotherham are always perennially down there. Um, so it's a case of basically not being that third club. You've you've got yeah. you've got a chance. I think you've probably got to get um, possibly some possibly someone who might get you eight to ten goals. Um, get another centre forward in who can who can deliver you that on a on a reasonably reliable basis. Um, and that's probably half the battle, I would say. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, we are looking at another, to bring in another striker, I believe. Um, they've got a couple of names for wingers as well. So there is movements for us to add to the squad. Um, like we we brought in um, Fletcher from uh, from Wolves, I think it was. Oh, uh, Ashley um, Fletcher. Ashley Fletcher, uh, Watford. Yeah. Watford. Yeah, he's from Watford. Watford. Yeah, he's from Watford. Sorry, sorry, my uh, miss, messing up my W's. Watford. Yeah, so we brought him in. He came on Luton. Uh, looked a bit of a handful, obviously short of match fitness. So mm. hopefully he's he's not got the best goal scoring record if you look at his history. But he's got a bit of pace. He's got a bit of pace. He's a he's a big guy as well. So mm. that's what we 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 need a bit of pace. So hopefully that'll go for us. Um, Steve, um, thank you very much for joining us. Um, it's been a pleasure, and obviously, I hope season goes well. Obviously, not as good as our season, and uh, I'm. Uh, I'm looking forward to Friday, mate. Got to say it. Looking forward to it. Start of the season, new season, new hope. So, yeah, let's go. Thanks new, new lot, hope, mate. new hope, new hope that we dashed in half an hour. Both, <laughs> no, both of us, no, no doubt. No, don't say that. No, it's gonna. It's, it, Ninety minutes, maybe, but not half an hour. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thanks for joining, everyone. Um, like I said, um, if you like it, like, subscribe, all of the socials you can see at the bottom. So, cheers. Thanks a lot. This podcast is proud to be part of the TalkSport Fan Network. TalkSport. Powered by fans.